good, you're here. Welcome to the Masterminding Success Podcast. They say if you want to be successful in business and in life, then surround yourself with successful people. So pull up a seat. The Mastermind is about to begin. Hey, glad you could join us for another episode of the Masterminding Success Podcast. We're your host, Keith Wheeler. And Nuria Corby. And what are we talking about today, Nuria? Today is another great topic. We're going to talk about everything we love about Amazon KDP. I think we could talk about that quite a bit as well, can't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, obviously, it's it's not all it's not all rainbows and and unicorns. We talked about that last week. Um, but but that said, you know, it's it's also not all doom and gloom either. You know, the KDP Amazon KDP does do a lot of good things, or or honestly, you and I wouldn't be using it right? Absolutely. We wouldn't be here talking about it. Yeah, Um, exactly. It's one of those things. I think there is a lot, as we said last week, there is a lot to complain about and things that could be better. And, but I think any business you're in, there's, there, there are going to be good bits and bad bits. Right. And compared to any other business that I've had in the past, and I'm trying to think hard about this because I, I want to be right about this, but I really can't think of any other business in the past that I've enjoyed more and that I found easier. Everything else was a lot of hard work. And I'm not saying Amazon KDP isn't hard work. Of course it is, but it it's kind of smoother and there's less problems for me than there were in the past with other types of businesses. What do you think about that? Yeah, you know, I I agree. I agree. Uh, I mean, I've done I've done many and, and still do many side hustles, um, but uh, and and when we say Amazon KDP, um, uh, partially we're talking about just self publishing in general, mm-hmm. but but focusing specifically on Amazon KDP is I th- it is by far one of the easiest ones to to get involved in to to start with. Um, you know, I I've got four kids and. And this is one of the few avenues that I've actually recommended that if they're looking for something to do, you know, to to do to start earning a side income, this is a great place to start. Is Amazon KDP? It is so user friendly, mm-hmm. um, you know, especially compared to some of the other platforms out there. And let's be honest, you know, it's it's free to use, mm-hmm. you know, exactly. and and you can't really compare, you know, you can't really complain about the the traffic that Amazon gets, you know, you, you know, tra- good luck trying to get that amount of traffic to your own website, you know, yeah. um, especially when you're first starting out. Yeah. So I, mean, I know that it's, yeah. if you have your own website, you know, that you have to, unless you advertise, there's never going to be as much traffic as you have on Amazon. So oh, right. absolutely. Yeah. Right. And I mean, and don't get me wrong, the having your own website and selling off your own website, that's the end goal. You know, that's because then that's when you get the one, they're your customers, 100% your customers. And two, you get the most amount of profits from it, obviously. But that said, you know, especially when you're first starting out, you know, it's it's really going to come down to traffic, you know, getting that traffic and and uh, Amazon, you know, it's kind of hard to to compete with the kind of traffic that Amazon gets you. Absolutely. I mean, we've had physical shops. I had a I had a bakery at one point. I had a a sweet shop. I had all sorts of different things. And uh, when I think about the impressions, for example, because unless you run Amazon ads, you don't know who's looking at your books. Right. But if you run Amazon ads, you can see how many people have at least looked uh, the, by the impressions or not looked, but they have seen it possibly, or it's come up on their screen. Right. And then you obviously know how many people have clicked on it. And I think about that sometimes. I thought whenever I've had a physical shop, I'm lucky if I get 10 people in there all day long, you know, so, and the amount of clicks you get on Amazon, I always equate that to somebody coming into my shop, picking up a product and looking at it, you know, and it's absolutely, there's no comparison between the amount of times that happens on Amazon KDP and the people I used to get into my physical shops, it's a far bigger business in terms of audience and in terms of mm-hmm. how many people you can reach. So to me, it's just mind blowing how many people you can reach on Amazon KDP. 
And you could say that about any business that's on a on a platform like Amazon. So, you, for example, you could have an eBay shop or an Etsy shop, and I've had all of that as well, and an Amazon Marketplace shop. And it's still not as good as Amazon KDP because of the print-on-demand model that Amazon KDP right. uses. So with eBay, I used to have to buy the stock, store it in my house. I had to source it, which can take a long time sometimes to find the right pieces for your shop. Yeah. And uh, then you had to um, list your items on whichever platform, whether that's eBay, Etsy, Amazon. Then you had to wait for customers. And if somebody ordered, you had to deal with the packing, the sending of the item. Then if there was a problem, you had to deal with customer service. So there was a lot to do. And uh, I remember the days when I was packing like 20 parcels every hour. <laughs> yeah. And that took a lot of work. And it, it was just such a headache. I've got none of that on Amazon KDP because when somebody buys my book, Amazon deals with it. So it yep. just couldn't be simpler. To me, it's just, I'm so, so happy that I found Amazon KDP because it's, you can't compare it to any other online business. It's just so, so much simpler and easier. And I don't know. I mean, I could talk about that for hours <laughs> because the other businesses were so time consuming and yeah. just completely different to to what we're doing now. Yeah. yeah. It, and I know one argument that some people are going to be making, they're probably thinking it right now when they're listening in is, um, is that, well, you can be, say this about any platform in self-publishing, you know, you know, I can publish on Lulu and put it up th through Amazon. So I'm still getting that traffic. It still, you know, it still has all the, you know, the, the hallmarks of a print on demand company, which means that they're doing all the work basically for you once you create it and upload it. Um, but I will say that, and, and that's all hundred percent true. But that being said, there's something to be said about the simplicity with Amazon KDP. You know, it's three very simple, you know, well laid out sections. Um, you know, there's there's definitely, uh, you know, as you're going through each page, the step by step, if you have a question, there's like a question mark right there. So it, it's really well laid out, I think, and and really ideal for people who are just starting out. Definitely. And I also think that their help section is really good as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, we talked about this last time that sometimes Amazon can be a little bit cryptic and, you right. know, has they, they have their, their odd sort of replies to some of the right. emails and that. But as far as the help section is concerned, I think it's all very well laid out. And they've also got the Amazon University so and the Amazon Quick Start. So there's so much to help you get going just on Amazon alone. And of course, then there's all the information you can find on YouTube. So it's it's really there's no there's no reason I can think of where it would be too difficult to start. You know, it it just isn't. There is everything you need out there in terms of, of information. And uh, you were saying about the other platforms. There are other platforms like Amazon, like Lulu, you know, all, all the others. They're not always free, though. And I also find that their reporting is probably not as helpful as Amazon's reporting. And I know people complain about Amazon's reporting, but actually, I think it's it's quite good. It's, you know, you've got everything you need in one place and uh, they report quite quickly. And I don't know of any self-publishers with other companies that that say the same thing. I mean, all the ones I've listened to, they kind of say the reporting on other platforms is not as good as Amazon's. I don't know if you agree with that, but that's what I've heard. Yeah. In in general, I would agree with that. Um, you know, the, I mean, Amazon's been doing it for a while. They, you know, their their reporting is is pretty spot on. Um, a lot of people don't know that Lulu actually was doing it longer than than Amazon. Um, but but yeah, I mean the and especially now that they've rolled out the 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 more advanced um, ad um, not ads but uh, reporting tools that they have with KDP. Um, yeah, I mean it it pretty much answers all the questions I have. You know, uh, from from looking at, you know, and I'm a big data guy, so data means a lot to me. But yeah, so I I I would agree in general that that yeah, their their reporting tool is is pretty spot on. 
And I also like how easy it is to um, to just go in and just just create. You know, I I op- I go to my my bookshelf. I can click on create a new paperback, create a new ebook, create a new hardcover, whatever. And then once you create one and you're done with it, and and other platforms do this too. But once you're done with it and you publish it, it says, "Hey, do you want to create the next one? Like, do you want to create the ebook for that?" And because one thing that that we like to to suggest to our customer to our viewers is don't just put out one type of book or one you know one format. You know, don't just put out the ebook, you know, because because our customers have all different kinds of of um, preferences. You know, some people prefer a physical copy in their hands. Some prefer to, you know, read it on their their smart device. Some people like to multitask and listen to it while they're doing something else, you know. And so it, it's really nice that even especially if you're just starting out and, and you don't think of that kind of stuff that the platform is reminding you, Hey, do you want to do this? And even, and you can just as easily say, no, I'll do it later or whatever. But the fact that it's a pop-up and it, and it just asks you, I think is a, is a really, really good thing that, that KDP does. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more with you. And it's quite easy how Amazon links everything together as well. Um, I just really think even though it's such a big, platform and it can be a bit clunky sometimes the actual upload process I think is quite smooth and I've never had any any big problems with it and I like that you can see the finished product as well straight away when they kind of review it and it and they let you review it and you can go through the pages and and they even tell you if there's an error so Mm -hmm. it's like it's very easy in that respect I, I like that about it Part of it is maybe also because we're used to it and, right. you know, it could be that. But um, from what I can see, it's for me, it's like a really easy platform to use. And uh, also, I think the other thing that I like about it is from a customer's perspective. You know, I'm probably Amazon's best customer <laughs> because I'm always ordering stuff from them. But and I know a lot of people don't like to order from Amazon, and I mm-hmm. kind of know why, and I agree with right. them on the reasons. But as we're in Amazon, and for me, it's just very convenient because I don't go out that much uh, to buy things because I'm always working, right. and it's just very convenient to order things. And when I order a book, it's just amazing because I've got Amazon Prime, and I can order a book and get it delivered tomorrow, and that means they've had to print it and deliver it in one day. And I'm, right. I'm, my mind is blown about that still, even though, because I think, how do they manage to do that? I don't know if that is a bad thing in terms of quality, whether the printing process is maybe a bit too fast, but I've never had any problems with it. And uh, it's just amazing how quick they are. So I have to say from a customer's perspective, ordering books through Amazon is has been a really good experience as well. Do you find that? I do. I do. And and another thing that I like, and you talking about that actually made me think of it, is, and I, I have not seen this happen in any of the books that I publish outside of KDP, but, um, and maybe it's because Amazon owns KDP, but I have seen many times my books, regardless of what my price is, Amazon knocking down the price. Yes. And and a lot of people get upset by that. They're like, wait, wait, what? I didn't, I didn't approve that. But what they don't realize is they're still getting their percentage mm-hmm. off the amount that that they put their book. So if I put my book at twelve ninety nine, and this actually happened, my, my one of my children's books was I have it at twelve ninety nine. They put it down to three dollars and change, mm-hmm. which is more than it would cost me to get it to get an author copy. Yeah, and they, but I was still getting my 60% off of the 1299, mm-hmm. you know? And so Amazon's losing money clearly on that deal. Yeah. And so um, I actually, you know, a lot of the the stores that, that buy from me, I was like, you know, I know I normally have you buy from me, but you might want to just order it right now while they're, you know, I think it was like 369 or something like that for yeah. a 1299 book. I mean, that's almost, you know, $10 off. And so, yeah, so I mean, I I haven't seen that kind of um, those kind of deals that Amazon does. I haven't they haven't done it on any of my books that I don't have on 
that are strictly on other platforms that are not yeah. on KDP. That is that is the beauty of being on Amazon, I guess, because Amazon being so big can afford to make a loss on certain books for a certain amount of time because they right. they know what they're doing. They're not doing right. that, you know, just willy nilly. Yeah, yeah willy nilly. I was going to say that, but um, they they know what they're doing and they they reduce the prices when the time is right to reduce them and it can only help your book and your whole probably your whole author um I th I th there was a name for that there's some kind of um way that amazon knows you are the author of of different pen names and it pushes mm -hmm. your your whole account up a little bit if you sell more books and I've noticed that because when I sell more of a certain book, my other books seem to be doing better as well. So there has to be some kind of connection there, I think. And uh, when that happens, I always go, yay, <laughs> you know, because yeah. when they reduce the price, of course, you're going to sell more, especially when the price is silly. Um, but I still get my royalties. And then when the price go up, goes up again, I've made those sales and hopefully they will con continue organically right. because, you know, Amazon has flagged it up and pushed it to the top a little bit. So right. it's, and then your it's BSR really, is higher. And, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So so it is a really good thing. And I, I can't understand when people get upset about that. But I guess that's because they don't know that it's an advantage, really. And uh, okay. there was that one book I, I made a video about on my channel that started selling lots and lots and lots of copies every day. And it was because it was a simple notebook and it was number, I can't remember what number, it was under the top 100 books in all of Amazon. When I saw it, I thought, that's a notebook. How come it's such a bestseller? And I dug deeper into the story and it was because Amazon reduced it to 99 cents. And the author or the creator of that book then really promoted it in any way that she could right. she, she had a huge she has a youtube channel she promoted it on there she promoted it everywhere she could and of course that created the buzz around the book and it became such a good you know i mean to be under the top 100 in amazons with a notebook yeah. but that is amazing and, and all due to the price reduction and yeah. also due to the author taking advantage of that and promoting right. the book yeah. So, so it's a good yeah, cause, thing. Yeah, because one one thing you know we we talked about you know not pricing your book super low because then it, it could question and make the customer question the quality. Yeah. Um, but when what we're talking about is it actually the customer can see the original price and it's just struck out. It's got you know a strike through it and then the new price. Um, so they can see that they're getting a deal. They don't just see a cheap product. They see that it was normally this price. And now it's this price. And I think I think you you kind of touched on a, a really good point, And we could do a whole nother episode just on that is, you know, is knowing what your normal sales are. So, you know, and, and obviously not necessarily to the T, but you can tell when sales are, are higher than they normally are and checking yeah. it somewhat regularly. So that way you can see, OK, well, I wonder why. And you notice something like that and, you know, it's going to be for a short period of time. And Amazon doesn't tell you they're doing it. They don't tell you for how long. And so really being able to to recognize that and jump on it and being able to take advantage of it like like that person did is a great way to really, you know, yeah. uh, raise your entire your entire uh, account. Because, you know, what every many people know about BSR, the bestseller rank, but a lot of people don't know that you actually have an author ranking, too. And that's and what that's what that's kind of what you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. So your author rank um, is is your pen name, you know, whatever, whether it's your real name or not. And um, at, you have a ranking for that as well. And so you're right. Like when when one of your books starts selling, your author ranking as a whole will go up, which will make all of them them look better and, and be promoted more. So, yeah, that's definitely something you you want to keep in mind. Yeah. So that's another big advantage. That's really only only Amazon really that do that I can't think of anybody else that would do that but yeah I mean to have and it's interesting because it's psychological as well because if you price your book really cheap to begin with people do think oh it's a cheap book the yep. quality is probably not that good but if you see a book that was $16 for example down to $5 
wow, I'm getting a bargain. And I don't know when they're going to put the price up again. So I better, right. I better buy it now <laughs> quickly. Yep. Yeah, you have that sense of urgency. Yeah. 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 So it's very yeah. clever how Amazon do that. And Amazon are experts in selling mm. online. Yeah. So, you know, it's a good thing our books are on Amazon because they help us. Amazon helps us sell books, basically. So Yeah. And one thing a lot of people don't realize is when Amazon first started, they first started as a book selling platform mm -hmm. um, before they sold everything else. Yeah. They were a book selling platform. So, yeah. so they, they know, they know book, you know, book buyers, you know, pretty, pretty well. But another positive to using Amazon KDP is the look inside feature. You know, you, if I put a book on, on Lulu and, and I, you know, I push it through to, to Amazon it may or may not get a look inside feature. You know, it's it's kind of a, a toss up. But when you put something through KDP, I have never had a book not have a look inside feature. Uh, you know, it may take a little bit longer than the, you know, the week or whatever they they claim to to do it, but you know, they they've it's always had one. Yeah. I didn't know that. So that's a really interesting point you've just raised. What about A+ plus content? Do they I imagine they don't have that either. I haven't no, noticed a, it. I have I have not seen A plus content mm. available. I mean, you, there is there's a way around it. I mean, you can create like a seller's account, but again, that's through Amazon. You know, you still have to do it through Amazon yeah. um, to to get the A plus content. And yeah. so, you know, it's it's a an Amazon specific uh, you know element. And so, whether you use KDP or do a workaround, either way, you know, if you want a A plus content. And it's available in your country because I know it's not available everywhere. Yeah. Then, then yeah, Amazon KDP is the is the easiest way to do it, and and the cheapest mm -hmm. because like a seller's account costs money, you know, a vendor's account mm -hmm. costs money. So, yeah. um, you know, again, KDP doesn't right now. Oh. I mean, Whether that's a good it. idea for them or not, it's it's the yeah. it's the way it currently <laughs> is. Yeah. Any other platform, eBay has listing costs. Um, mm -hmm. Etsy has listing costs. Whenever you sell something, they take a percentage. So it all adds up. And on Amazon, it's basically you're just getting royalties, which actually makes it, I don't know, in other countries, but here in the UK, it makes it easier for tax purposes as well, because I'm not selling anything. You know, I'm just getting royalties. Amazon is the seller. So there is an, an advantage um, right. for your tax as well. So I could think of quite a few, but I mean, and we were talking about the look inside, which I didn't even realize. So that's a good point. But I always say to people, you know, make sure you've got A plus content because A plus content to me, when they introduced that, I thought, yay, that's that's such a right. good thing to have because it's like a shop window. Mm -hmm. You know, before that, we just had our book and the look inside. For low content books, we don't have a look inside anymore anyway. So you know, and when you're looking on your phone, you don't see the look inside very often. I know there's a way around that, but who bothers playing right. with the phone to just have a look at a product? So so A plus content is great because you can just showcase your book like you would dress a shop window. You can mm -hmm. say more about your book. And I do A plus content for everything, even for notebooks, because it's just it. It makes mine stand out from other people that don't do it and that don't have it. Yeah. Um, and I know some people will say, well, what can you say about a notebook? But there's a lot you can say about, about a notebook and just present it nicely and have but, pictures. Well, yeah. I was going to say, and that's just it. The, the thing about, about um, A plus content is you don't have to say about it. You know, that's the problem with a book description is exactly. you have to say about your book. Yeah. But, you know, and people are visual learners anyway. And yeah. so you, like you were, like you were going to say before I interrupted you, um, pictures, you know, you put the pictures in there of people using your product, That's you it. know, yeah. and, and so, and people, like I said, people are visual learners and, and they buy based on emotions typically. And so if they see an image of it being used, then they can better chance of seeing themselves using it in a similar situation or something like that. Yeah. And so, yeah, I absolutely agree. A plus content is yeah is when it came out was like a, a no brainer for me, like whether it's puzzle books or children's books or whatever. And, you know, not everybody likes to read a big, long dissertation and, you know, in a book description, you know, most people and don't, most people don't. <laughs> right. Right. So unless yeah. the readers, 
Um, and then they'd rather just be reading your book, not reading about your book. Uh, but yeah, but seeing it, seeing the the images or seeing, like I said, somebody using it, you know, those are huge, huge positives. Definitely. I mean, I, I've i done this so long now on eBay, on Etsy, on Amazon Marketplace. I know people don't read descriptions because right. there are many instances where a buyer has come back to me and said, oh, well, this isn't um, what I thought it was because blah, blah, blah. And I've and I've thought, wow, it says exactly in the description what this is. Didn't they read right. it? You know, and that happens all the time. And that's how I know that that most people don't read it. Yep. And A plus, I mean, it's just so simple because you you just show them in pictures, you know. And even if they don't want to read, most people do look at pictures. And, you know, if it's clear in the picture, then then that it really helps to showcase your book. So a plus for me is, you know, one of the one of the good things about Amazon, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I agree. And if you haven't got A plus content for your books, go and do it because it does help sell books, especially that module where it compares books and you can showcase all your other books. And then when people click on it, takes yep. takes them to your other books, which what platform does that? <laughs> I don't right. I don't know of many other ones. Yeah. yeah. And and I know some people are probably saying, well, I don't have A plus in, in my in my country or whatever. And and that kind of leads me to another positive with Amazon, uh, KDP and just Amazon in general. But um, they listen to their customers. Mm -hmm. You know, don't get me wrong. They're they're a huge, huge company company. So they can't necessarily pivot immediately on something, you know, but they I mean. I've seen, I mean, I've been doing this since 2016. I, I've seen the changes they make, you know, I've seen both positively and negatively, you know, it, when they see authors come in or creators come in and try to work the system, they change the system, you know, to, to kind of counterbalance that. Um, when they, um, I mean, the reporting tool has changed. It's gotten better. You know, the fact that you can now put some HTML inside the book description, you couldn't do that before, but yeah. but authors wanted to do that, and and KDP listened and and eventually put that in there. Uh, the most recent changes that they made is they got rid of the where you select to buy sec categories and you actually select Amazon categories yeah. that that are the same categories your customers are going to search. You know, it took a while for them to do that, but they did it. You know, yeah. and and most of the other platforms that I've worked with, and I've worked with plenty of them. They do listen to their customers as well, but because they're smaller in comparison to Amazon, it takes them longer to make, you know, significant changes. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. And the thing you were saying about people saying, well, I haven't got A plus content in my country. That kind of makes me think about another good thing about Amazon is that you don't have to just sell in your country. You can right. sell worldwide, you know, so whatever country you're in, you can still sell in the US, which is the biggest marketplace. And you can still mm -hmm. sell in the UK and in Germany, which are the other two big marketplaces. And I think, you know, that's, that's a big advantage. You know, you might not have A plus content for your country, but you can still have it for those other countries. And just the fact that you can actually sell on other countries is yeah. It's amazing, you know. And you can run and you can run ads in other countries too. I mean, yeah. I have I have certain books that that I only run ads in the UK because they sell well, you know, much better there than they sell, you know, in in the other locations. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, the the that amount of flexibility mm -hmm. that you have with your business and, you know, being able to regardless of where you're located, being able to, you know, sell pretty much anywhere and and similarly, especially compared to other platforms, that the fact that Amazon KDP is available in so many different countries compared to, you know, a lot of the competitors are only located in some only in the US and some you can only use if you're in North America and some are, you know, have, a you know, maybe 10 countries as opposed to, you know, all the countries that, that Amazon KDP is available in. Absolutely. That's a big that's a big deal. You know, I don't think people sometimes appreciate that enough, you know, that we've got such a big marketplace to play with. 
yeah. you know that's that's amazing i mean probably because i'm older i remember a time when doing business abroad was a lot more yeah. complicated <laughs> yeah. than it is now you know uh the days before the internet this wouldn't have been possible at all right and i still remember those days <laughs> so do i so do i actually was having a conversation with with my youngest son who's 19 um i was you know i was talking to him about uh before the internet and he goes what do you mean before the internet I'm like yeah <laughs> yeah believe it or not there was life before the internet yeah. there was life before smartphones um yeah. or cell phones in general um but um but yeah but like a, a and and I'll be honest, you know, I'm I'm in the U.S. and it's very common to be American centric and 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 kind of forget that other countries exist, <laughs> you know, within your business. Um, yeah. But you know, one thing that really helps bring it home for me is is when I look at my analytics for my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And you know, obviously, uh, I have a lot of viewers. Most of my viewers are from the U.S. and in Canada and the U.K. But I mean, the number of people that I get from Morocco and you know all these other countries. And the fact that they're watching my videos tells me that they're mm -hmm. interested in KDP or they're interested mm -hmm. in, in self-publishing. And there are, in some of those countries, KDP is the only option. You know, they yeah. they can't use Lulu or Ingram Spark or draft a digital or whatever, because they're not available there yet, mm -hmm. you know? And so again, this goes back to the, the size of Amazon. You know, this is one of the positives is that they're able to reach out to all these other countries. And so, um, again, that's just, you know, the, I, it excites me because I really think that everybody has uh, a book in them to, to publish, whether it's a written book or, you know, a, a no content or whatever, that, that I think that's something that everybody should at least have the availability to do and to learn about and to actually be able to, to profit from. And the fact that it's available in so many different countries because of Amazon KDP and the fact that, like we said before, Amazon KDP is so user-friendly, especially for, for new people starting out, I think is huge. You know, yes. it's, it would be much easier if it's in a bunch of countries, but it's difficult to use, you know? Yeah. Uh, but the fact that it is a, a, the pos the great combination of those two things, it's, it's widely available and it's, pretty easy to use like yes there's plenty of videos out there but i honestly think and maybe it's just because i've been using it for so many years but i really think that that you could use it with very little questions even if you didn't have a youtube video to watch or the the knowledge base which like you said is is amazing as well mm -hmm. um yeah so and you know we haven't even talked about the, the little chat feature that we talked about last week that's right yeah i think you know you just made a few really good points and I think it's because um I mean I know a lot of people don't agree with us when we say it's very very easy to use and a lot of people mm -hmm. will probably say well no it's not that easy to use and I know that from people you know asking me questions and I realize right. that it's not so easy for some people but I think you and me are thinking about it in terms of what we've experienced so far and uh, we only have to think about I mean, I taught myself how to set up a WordPress blog and you know how difficult that is right, and how yeah. Amazon is a doddle compared to setting up a WordPress site, you know. So it really, I mean, it it kind of depends on what you're used to, you know. And uh, if you haven't done, if you haven't had the same journey that we've had where we've had other shops on other platforms where we might have set up a website on WordPress, where we've done all these different things that were a very steep learning curve for me mm -hmm. anyway. Um, Amazon just seems so so simple now, but I think I can say with confidence that it is simpler than a lot of other things that I've done. Maybe it's not so simple for someone that's completely new to this whole online working right. business, but like you said, I mean, there is there are the tutorials on YouTube, but even if you don't want them, Amazon itself has a big um, site, you know, the, the university thing, the, the quick start, which is one where you can learn how to, you know, you don't have to do all the lessons of the university, Amazon University, but you can just start quicker with that. Right. Um, I'll actually have to look through that because I haven't actually 
<laughs> done that yet. So, but I imagine that it it will answer quite a lot of questions and be helpful to people who are just starting. So yeah, I do I do think that it's a lot easier than a lot of the other things I've done before. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. and and obviously we use the word easy or whatever, and that's all subjective, yeah. you know, based on our you know everybody's own journey. But but when I say it, I, I'm I'm saying it specifically in relationship to the other print on demand self publishing options that are out there. Um, okay. I have found it to be more um, intuitive and and kind of laid out even laid out better mm -hmm. um to the point where i've seen other sites uh print on demand sites that have revamped their their platform and the new version looks very similar to kdp's <laughs> you know because they they were able to recognize the fact that yeah i mean it's it's really just three three steps you know and mm -hmm. so again i'm not saying it's it's a cakewalk and and obviously this business is by no stretch is um but I think that uh, Amazon KDP, like I said, they, you know, they're not perfect. We we talked about that last week. Um, but that said, you know, they there's still so many different positives. Or like I said, when we first started this conversation today is we wouldn't be using them, you know, no, um, that's you know, right. I mean, they're not the only platform that I use, but they are the main one that I use because I don't believe in putting all your eggs in one basket, but yeah. they are, they are a, a pretty big uh, key platform that I use in my business. Mm. And I'm the kind of person who loves an easy life. And if Amazon wasn't easy to use for me, yeah. I definitely wouldn't be using it because I've I've tried other things and I might have started things, but then not really continued with them because they were so difficult or clunky or mm -hmm. bothersome to use. And I've continued with Amazon KDP, so there must be something good about it. Right. Otherwise, I like you said, we wouldn't be here. So yeah, definitely can't do anything else but recommend Amazon KDP for anybody who wants to publish or self-publish yeah. or wants to start an online business. Even yeah. you know, it's, it's yeah, really especially especially if you're just starting out. Um, yeah. When 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 I talk about self-publishing, which I talk about all the time, um, I if someone is just you know they say I'm just getting into self-publishing, what platform should I use? Without a doubt, I say KDP. And to yeah. be honest, um, I and you know I've I've been in this industry for for many years, and I know a lot of a lot of uh, other content creators. And um, I, I think that's the universal answer. Is I, I don't know of anybody who suggests a different platform to start on than KDP. Yeah, yeah definitely. I I totally agree. That's another thing we've agreed on. <laughs> <laughs> This this has been another great mastermind, Nuria. Once again, a huge thank you to all our listeners and viewers who came to tag along. If you enjoyed today's mastermind, please consider following or subscribing to the podcast and maybe even leave us a review and let us know what you thought. Until next week, I'm Keith Wheeler. And I'm Nuria Colby. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining the mastermind today. Be sure to follow the podcast on your platform of choice and tell a friend who would enjoy it too. Your support is greatly appreciated. This has been the Masterminding Success Podcast.